order. Okay, well, I'll restart that. <laughs> I'm gonna call this meeting of the Affirmative Action Committee to order. Um, so to, uh, I wanna uh, do a roll call, that way we can determine the quorum. Um, the only precedent of a quorum uh, <clears throat> we have right now is uh, that of the State Executive Committee. They use 40%, therefore, under our procedural rules are adopted, we will, until our procedural rules are adopted, we will use 40%. Um, please unmute when I call you. So I'm gonna do a roll call. So just unmute so I can just get a here or present or whatnot. All right, Mary Thorpe. Here. Uh, Bob Baker. Here. Anana Islam. She'll Ariana be late. Islam. I mess up your name every time and I'm, I apologize. She'll be <laughs> late. She'll be here. Okay, she's here. All right. So I'm, I, I apologize even though she ain't here. <laughs> All right, Jerry Powell. Present. All right, Mary Ann Clater. Here. All right, uh, Marley Midget. Marlene Midget. Not here. All right. All right. Marilyn Monahan. Hey, I'm here. And um, I think I see Marlene is here too. All right. Marlene, are you here? Maybe she's uh, she stepped away from her. I'll, I'll come back to her. Okay. All right. Uh, Councilwoman Ketchum. He said her, Marlene said her computer froze. Okay. So she is here. All right. Good. Uh, Councilwoman Ketchum. Here. All right. Representative Thompson. Here. All right, uh, Kelly Elkin, Elkins. Here. All right, Rusty Williams. Here. Kim Felix. Kim Felix. I seen her. I was her. Okay, there she is. I see her screen. She messed up the way. I come. Okay, here. here. Got you. All right, uh, Charlie Mullins. Charlie Mullins. All right. Charlie's not here. Um, so I was supposed to be his proxy, but I'm not sure how that's going to work out. Okay. Yeah. I, I think he yeah. was, he's coming from out of town. So I know he's going to be late. All right. Uh, Seth, uh, I, I pronounce your last name for me. Just so I'll mess it up. Sir. Sir. I'm sorry. Sir. Okay. Sorry about that. That's all right. Mary, sir. Here. Mary. Okay. Good. All right. Islam on here twice. Uh, Dandy? Did you did you say Dottie? Dottie Bird? There we go. There yep. Go. Yeah. Here. All right. Uh, and Selena Vickers. Here. All right. All right. Uh, so if you if you got the emails, have you been uh I'm sorry, Miss Cl uh, Emily, Emily Clifford. Sorry, we, we didn't have you. I'm sorry about that. You're fine. I'm here. <laughs> All right, sorry about that. I apologize. And Stephanie yep. Poole is here too. Stephanie Poole? Yes. Okay. Hollis, Ariana yeah. has arrived also. Okay. How you doing, Ariana? Good. Sorry I was late. I had to drive home from Morgantown. <laughs> hey, no problem. Emily, is your is your is your dad Mike Clifford? Yes, he is. Oh, nice. <laughs> That's my man. All right. Anyway. All right. Um, so if you've been paying attention to your email, we uh, we sent out a copy of some temporary procedural rules. Um, again, these are temporary. Uh, we understand that um, um, th these aren't going to be, uh, th there needs to be a discussion on them and we need to uh, make sure that, you know, we all agree and everything like that. But would anybody like to make a motion to adopt the, uh, these temporary rules? Temporary procedural rules. So moved. I'm sorry. You you muted yourself. I move we adopt the temporary rules for this meeting. All right. Do we have a second? I'll second. All right. All right. So do we need to uh, open it up for discussion? Remember, these are temporary rules. These won't be the, the ones we go by. We'll have an opportunity to 
flush them out and get rid of things we don't like and um, and uh, add and subtract and everything like that. So we don't have any, do we have any discussion? All right, so can we just, oh, I'm sorry, Seth, sorry about that. Sorry, go ahead, sir. Uh, yeah, I actually have a couple of issues with the temporary rules and I think that they could use some amendments. Um, the first of which being number five, uh, I know for a fact that, you know, not all of us are comfortable being on video and some people would prefer not to be. And I think that that's really uh, overreaching to tell us we must be. Uh, it's one thing to ask if we will be, it's another thing to say we have to be. Got it. Um, and then on number 13, you're gonna have to define what you mean by conducting business because as you know, the um, indigenous caucus, we passed a resolution condemning the actions of the AAC by sending the um, list of demands that you sent to Belinda Beaufort. So um, with that in mind, with the, with the Indigenous Caucus, you know, not being a part of that, would that be something that would fall under your purview with this rule in number 13? Uh, because, you know, we all have reputations. And as I said in that resolution, as we said, you know, we don't want to have hostilities with the Democratic Party. We're here to build the Democratic Party, not tear it down. All right, let's address the first one you say you said uh, so let's go back to number five. Can we can you pull that up number five? Can you just scroll down. All right. Uh, so um, if, if I'm understanding you correct, you were saying that um, just it may be an issue with people not feeling comfortable on video and things of that nature. I guess right. and, I, and, I, and I'm not, you know, debating that I'm just uh, kind of what we were thinking is just that we just want everybody to, if you have motions, if you have something to say, we would like to just see you to keep it um, just more um, in line with like a face-to-face -face meeting. But um, so that that was just the thinking in, I think, in drafting it. Um, as far as number five, would any does anybody else have any discussion or, 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 or issue with uh, sort of um, the request that people be on video when uh, holding these meetings? Anybody have a problem with it? Is yes or no? Or, I'm sorry, Marianne. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> I, okay. I got to start looking at the, the hand. Raising. Go ahead, Marianne. Okay. Yes, I'm against number five. Uh, some people, as we've seen, we live in West Virginia and we need to be cognizant of that as far as different people's bandwidth. I mean, I just don't think it should be a requirement that you're on video. Uh, you know, because some people may even have to, at some point, call in on phone. So how are you addressing yeah. that? Yeah, that's actually a good point. I, I, I didn't really, uh, I, I didn't I'm consider on... the bandwidth. That's a great point. Okay, uh, I'm Rusty. Stephanie Poole. Oh, okay. Just, just raise your hand, Ms. Poole. I don't, can't do that because it says your video is stopped. I'm only getting verbal and I can't do any commands. Uh, okay, I got you. All okay. right. Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, the, the, uh, did you have something, Miss? Okay, Rusty. Yeah, go ahead. I just said I'm not getting any video at all. I'm just getting you talking. Okay. Go ahead, Rusty. I just I just wanted to agree with um, with Seth and Marianne on number five. Just like for instance, tonight my internet connection has been garbage all day, and um, I couldn't run my video for this meeting if I wanted to. So that you know that could be an issue for some of us. Got you. Uh, Mr. Baker. Hey, af after you've spoken, could you just uh, lower your hand? So that yes. way we can just get through everybody. Um, Go ahead, Mr. Baker. I would like to agree um, with Seth and, and the other speakers who have, uh, because not just because of bandwidth, I don't, I don't think I have a problem with that. Um, but I do think that we should encourage people to use their video because it makes it a lot, if they can, because it makes it a lot easier to see what they're saying and understand what they're saying. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Uh, Jared Powell. Sorry, I forgot to unmute there. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, I just wanted to jump in and I think um, in the conversation, I kind of sense a general direction of agreement of the committee. So at this time, I'd like to offer an amendment, if that'd be entertained by the chair, mm -hmm. to strike the word require and in, in lieu of insert uh, request. Okay, do we have a second on that amendment? I'll second it. Okay, thank you. 
Marlene, did you have something to say to wrap it up? Or, okay. No, I was going to second it. All right, thank you. No problem. I, I'm sorry now, Marlene. Marilyn, sorry about that. Marilyn, did you have anything else? Are you good? Okay. All right, so um, just all in favor, just give me an aye. We can just do a verbal. Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. All right, so with that, we will strike the requirement and just ask for just a request if you can. So they're all great points. All right. Um, if we can move to number 13. And Seth, could you just uh, give me a, a just just kind of uh, give me a synopsis of what you stated in regards to 13? Yes, in number 13, it says to exercise all authority and management of business and affairs. Um, so when they says the, the management of affairs, are we talking about um, things like that list of demands that was sent to Belinda before? Because as you know, the Indigenous Caucus, we passed a resolution about that, and we don't agree with the direction of, that we've been headed in terms of hostility with the state party. We really want to get past that and get to work on doing what we're supposed to do, reaching out to our, our individual caucuses and bringing people back into the party who may have left, uh, doing everything we can to stop the bleed from what's been happening and losing to all these Republicans. So, uh, you know, I just, would that be covered? I mean, so was that action covered? Would that action be covered by this rule 13? Because I, you know, we've taken umbrage with it. It wasn't discussed. It wasn't put before the committee. Um, and it really did damage as far as I can tell. All right. Uh, thank you for that. Um, I, I think what this, what number 13, um, what is stating is that we were going to be sort of in charge of our own affairs. Um, not, I don't think what we, what, what was meant by that was to, like uh, far as hostility and, and, and sort of kind of attacking the, the, the executive committee and the larger democratic party. I, I do agree with you that's, that's, you know, that's not um, ripe at this time. But I think what was meant is that we were gonna just be in kind of in charge of our own affairs. So I think that was the thinking of it. Um, go ahead, Marianne. Well, I was trying to figure out what those affairs were too, because, you know, we have historically had a problem since, uh, Pretty much our inception, uh, we, we, we've been having breakdowns in communication. And a lot of the concerns are that we weren't getting information. We weren't, weren't being able to have input. So I'm concerned about the power that's been given here. Um, so I, I'm just trying to say, what examples of, do you feel like you need some authority that you, know, you wouldn't be able to come back to us? Because this is very important in the Affirmative Action Committee that all members are involved in having input, you know, having the information in a proper manner you know, so that we um, feel that we're represented. Uh, so that's why I'm concerned about, um, it, it just doesn't have enough specific, I don't know what, powers you are, are wanting. All something. right, well, I, I think I think that concern, uh, we will, I think kind of your concern is maybe a little bit beyond the scope of that particular rule. And we will actually have a, a, a section in the agenda where we will actually specifically cover uh, your concern. I think what this rule is just articulating is just that we are, we as the Affirmative Action Committee will just be charged with our own dealings and business and affairs. I, I think that's just all it's stating. Um, go, go ahead. Uh, um, uh, Representative Thompson. Thank you, Hollis. Uh, inquiry of the chair, really. Um, so as 13 reads, and this is just my interpretation, and please do correct me if I'm uh, incorrect in this interpretation, but um, <clears throat> the way 13 is written and why it is in there is the intention to allow uh, the co-chairs of the different AA committees to discuss um, any business so that uh, we could all collaboratively discuss it instead of, you know, discussing things at length that can take many, 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 many hours um, during or in between meetings rather than during the meeting. And that way, any official business would then come before all co-chairs on um, all, you know, for me, like what we're doing tonight, a meeting like this, so that, you know, any official business will be voted on um, with all co-chairs present, uh, or as long as there's a quorum. Is that my, is that the correct interpretation of this or am I misguided? No, I think, I think you're, I think you're along the right lines. I, I think that's, that's kind of where we were thinking about it. And right, uh, for easy purposes to get the, you know, any, um, that we can work together 
on our own um, schedules. Okay, thank you. All right, we're, we're just gonna allow everybody, like if you've already spoken, just uh, we're gonna allow everybody who wants to speak and then we'll come back and kind of do a second round if you have an additional comment. Uh, so if you just unraise your hand and we'll allow everybody who hasn't spoken and then we'll come back if you have additional comment. Go, go ahead, Kim. I'm sorry, I must have missed the beginning of the meeting. Who's the presiding officer, is that you? Yeah. Okay, did you announce that? I'm sorry, I totally missed it. Um, sorry, I didn't announce that. I'm sorry about that. Okay, so I'm just trying to get an understanding of exactly what it is I'm being asked to follow and or amend and or recommend um, changes to. Who wrote these rules? Uh, Mary and I wrote them, and Seth he had a uh, he had he he brought up issues with uh, number five in the procedural rules as far as the request and the on. Like just being I heard that the, part, but I'm trying to figure out who wrote these rules. Why weren't they sent earlier so that we had an opportunity to read them, put them over, especially if we were going to be asked to comment on them today and provide amendments. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not as quick a reader as everybody else. So if I'm going to ask to be editing a document in this fashion, I need time to read it. I need time to understand what it says and I need time to figure out how what the larger implications are for everybody else that it's going to affect, not just me, but any other person or persons that it's gonna affect on the committee. Um, I sent an email earlier, you may or may not have read it, I have no clue. I don't expect you to because it was just minutes or hours before this meeting was scheduled to convene. And I'm trying to get a sense of why everything is being restricted. And by everything, I mean my ability to, to, to talk to people in the chat, um, the rules that are written in this particular document. And I understand that this is being put forth as a mechanism to, to help streamline the meetings that we've been having. But I think there needs to be a recognition as to how we got to this point and why people feel the need to send multiple e emails, why people feel the need that they have to speak out or talk over others or whatever the case may be, because we didn't start out that way. And so uh, I think there needs to be a recognition of how we got that way. And I think we need to talk about the elephant in the room. Um, and so if there isn't going to be a recognition of that and or honest conversation about that, all of this is for, for, for not, it really is, because we are not gonna move forward and we're not as a caucus going to get the work that we need to get done. I understand that there's an agenda and people wanna to get to the plan and da, 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 and all of those things. But if you can't settle the issues that are within our own house, this, this whole meeting is going to be a waste of everybody's time. People are gonna walk away upset and still with the apathetic attitudes and dispositions that they have. And we're never gonna to get to the business that needs to be gotten to. And attempting to implement um, oppressive disenfranchisement is not the way to run meetings. It just isn't, I'm sorry. All right, well, well, first let me say that these are temporary rules. This is just something, well, let me say this first. Um, there was a portion, I believe, in the um, in um, and Selena, you can advise me if I'm incorrect. There was a portion in the robber rules as far as it talked discussed about online meetings, and a lot of this was just within that online meetings how to do it uh, to keep the the meetings orderly. So we thought that um, it would be a good idea to implement procedural rules in order to keep our meetings structured to keep them orderly, to keep them timely so they don't run over. So that was a thought process uh, in it's like formulating these temporary rules. And again, they were temporary, they are temporary um, in that we just, again, and I'm kind of guys throwing myself under the bus, we didn't come up with them weeks or months in advance. It's something we, we discussed about, we came up kind of short notice. So that's kind of why we threw them out there like that. And we just wanted to, Give you a chance to read them, and then we can have a discussion, and we can, um, it, it, you know, amend them at later points. Um, Selena, am, am I right in that? Parliamentary, am I right in that? So you all asked me to provide you with some, um, you know, some sort of like how to have a meeting where everybody can participate, and uh, under Robert's Rules of Order. Uh, which were required to provide by the whole new 12th edition um, takes into consideration 
that there are a lot of virtual meetings happening and it's very difficult for um, for the the mechanisms that happen in a real meeting online. And so they recommend as closely as possible to try to um, have, have rules that affect that. And one of the things that they recommend is to have the chat um, feature uh, disabled so that it's, they, they view uh, a, an open chat as the equivalent of uh, people whispering in, in meetings. And so um, they think that it's important for people in a meeting to focus on the person that is speaking. Uh, that's like one example. So the, the kind of um, some of the basic, the basics around how to try to do that um, were provided. And again, the whole rule or a whole reason of Robert's Rules and Order is try to find a, uh, a, a, a way so that you have both the majority and the minority um, have, have an opportunity to speak. Um, that, and you know the majority rules, but the minority still has an opportunity to speak. And so the, the rules are basically put together to allow for that for different, for, for debate on issues and, um, and, and discussion. All right, um, uh, Jared, you're muted. Sorry, I saw Kim put down her hand. I just wanna make sure that she was like, you know, she yielded the floor and everything. There wasn't anything else she wanted to add. No, okay, I, I see. No, thank that you. Okay, yeah, I just wanna make sure. Um, and I, I don't want this to come off in any way like I'm trying to uh, railroad, like, you know, consideration of this. Um, and I'm trying to think of the best way that would be aidful for, you know, those of us like, you know, within this meeting, uh, reviewing the document as like, you know, committee members to actually uh, fully understand it. I think like, you know, then we could find out the ways to enumerate any issues that there might be or like, you know, disagreements and stuff. And then in order to actually have like a productive debate on this, uh, it would be my hope then as we enumerate those issues, we might try to come together and use some of our debate time in order to think if there's any need for amendments or if we can proceed with that. Uh, because I think on the issue on the 13th uh, rule, uh, if, the co-chair can correct me if uh, the chair, I'm sorry, can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think he said there was a resolution uh, in the actual business uh, section of the meeting that will address those issues and possibly some of those concerns. So maybe perhaps a holistic, very brief overview of like what the rules are trying to accomplish. And then I think we can see if there's any uh, need for amendment and then consider it. Um, and like, you know, I more than willing to like have that open discussion, I guess, and figure out ways like, you know, uh, I can share my interpretation. I think we can bounce ideas off one another of how we can best do this to move forward as a committee and get to uh, the tasks we've been mandated with and the uh, rather lengthy agenda we have tonight. I know uh, we've been joking around some about that, but I think that'd be my remarks on this. All right, uh, Steph, I'll give you an opportunity. Let me just ask if there's anybody else who has comment on it before I uh, let uh, Steph go again. Yes, I, I would like to speak i yes, uh, ask, ask a question, if I may. Uh, my uh, understanding of these rules are that they apply to this meeting and possibly the interval between this meeting and the next or whenever permanent rules of procedure are adopted. Um, and if, if we are clear that these rules apply only to this meeting, um, then um, it doesn't matter what happens between meetings. Uh, number 13 may have been uh, overkill, um, but uh, it, it, it doesn't hurt anything been, being there as long as it applies, as long as these rules apply to this meeting and until final rules are adopted. Thank you for that, sir. All right, do we have anybody else? Um, so just raise your hand, please. All right, Seth, you can go, you can go ahead back. Oh, okay. You can, you can let Seth go ahead. Okay, well, first of all, um, is number 13, just a clarification real quick, is number 13 granting you authority to do things that Robert's Rules doesn't already? I don't think so. Okay, so, so some of these are definitely repeats from Robert's Rules. Um, well, and you know, Kim actually said that she didn't have time to go over these properly. If it's uh, in order, 
I would like to move that we table this until the next meeting so that we all have time to look over it. All right. All right. Um, do we have a, um, I'll, I'll let you go, Marianne, but just do we have a second on uh, such motion? I'll second it. Is that Marianne or Kim? Right? All right. Um, so we'll just, uh, we can just move for a vote and then on. So um, all those in favor of tabling um, the passing of the temporary procedure rules to the next meeting. Sorry. Quarry. Yeah, the chair. The chair. I'm sorry, I don't know who's speaking. I was second. Someone was before me. Yeah, I had a parliamentary inquiry. Is so just to reaffirm the motion or the question before the committee. Is it to table 13, like rule 13 specifically, or the entirety of the document? I think what Steph was saying was the table an entire document. Okay. Yeah. Hollis. Am I am I clear on that, Steph? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Okay. I'm sorry. Is, Hollis, this is morning. I don't know where my hand's at. Okay. <laughs> we we're going to have to have some guidelines and tabling this is going to put us behind meeting a goal. We need to trust one another and say, okay, we'll temporarily move this ahead, take 13 out or five, but we need to have something, I believe, done today. And any organization I've been in, we have to trust one another. You need rules and guidelines. Okay, and I'm sorry, I was out of order. Um, before we move to a vote, uh, we just need to have a debate on it. So I, I appreciate your comments there. Uh, Cody, you, you were next, sir. You muted. I muted and I hit a button and things went crazy. Sorry, yeah, that was actually my next question if this was a debatable motion, yes. um, which thank you for that clarification. Yeah. Um, also, so uh, an inquiry of the chair would be, so if we, um, would like to proceed with having these uh, rules as drafted, the temporary rules that can be altered and modified, um, you know, later on as we see fit, but to continue on with our current, you know, agenda and the work of the AA um, committee, we would uh, vote against the motion. And um, is that correct? I'm sorry, I thought you were making a statement. Could you just Oh, yeah, no, it's an inquiry. Um, so if, uh, if we were wanting to continue on with the agenda and to continue with these rules that are temporary and that we can be modified at a later date, if we feel so the need to do that uh, within the AA committee, we would vote to reject this amendment. Is that correct? Yeah, uh, to table it. I, I think Seth, his motion table. was to table it until the next meeting. Oh, the so you can vote against it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we can vote against that motion. All right, thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other uh, uh, discussion on uh, Seth's motion to table the, uh, the voting on procedurals? Go ahead, Mary Ann, then we go to Bob. Well, I, I was just uh, gonna say that I'm in favor of tabling this because we really have not had time and we can use the excuse that um, we need some procedures. You know, we, we've, uh, we got started in June and while this is just now coming up, should have came up before. And I, I think that we need to make sure that everybody understands, um, even though it's temporary, everybody understands each item. I mean, I definitely have, this is my busy time. I definitely have not had time to go through it in detail on each of these lines. And I just think, you know, just common decency in regards to the um, uh, everybody's time and uh, that they would have ample time to go over it and not have anything kind of rush down, their, um, rush down our throats. Yes, yeah, totally understandable. Uh, Mr. Uh, Baker. Yes, I, I think I would oppose tabling this motion. So I would vote against tabling, but I do think it needs to be amended to um, maybe delete 13 and to specify specifically that um, these are in effect only until the next meeting and I'll make that motion if we don't table. All right, I'm gonna let you go, Seth, but just let me uh, see if we got anybody else that's open for discussion. We have anybody else that wants to um, to discuss the, uh, Seth's motion to table it? All right, uh, Seth, you can go ahead again. We'll vote after that. Um, well, I would just say that to what Bob said, if the motion to table doesn't pass, I would support uh, just removing 13 and changing five, because uh, we do need, 
some rules for how we conduct video meetings. I think that that's completely appropriate, but uh, I just think the questions around 13 are, are great. And some people did voice concerns about not being able to go over it. So I want to respect those people. And that's why okay. I made that motion. So do you want to table your motion just to delete? No, I want to go through with the I want to go through with the motion and the vote to find out how people feel because you know Kim and Marianne have both said they didn't have time to go over the document. But okay. otherwise, I am open to what Bob said. Gotcha. Thank you. All right. So we don't have any other um, discussion on Seth's motion to table it. Um, I, I I want to do this in a way that uh, I can accurately count everybody. Um, can everybody just, if, uh, just all the yays, could you just put it in the in the chat just so I can make sure I'm accurately counting everyone? No, because the chat was disabled. Yeah. Um, which is part of the problem. Totally disabled? Uh, yes. You can't thought, send you, any. Oh, I thought it was open. For, um, can I ahead. speak real quick? Um, yes. If you click more, you can chat, but it will only direct message to who has the affirmative action account. So someone can still vote, but it, we cannot publicly see it. Just, yeah. The chat's only open for that. I just wanted to let everyone. Um, Mr. Chair, it yes. might be a, maybe a more simplified um, way to do this, you know, virtually. Maybe if, if you are in favor to hold up a hand. Yeah. Yeah. Could you just hold up your hand? So uh, for um, all those in favor of tabling the motion. Can, yeah. Hollis, I have an inquiry first, please. Yeah. Um, there are people who are not members are um, on screen, it would be helpful to you as you look at these, if people who are on screen would please turn their video off so they could see, but we can't see them. And the only people that you see are, um, are just the members. And that, I think that would make it easier for you to count both the yays and nays. Okay. And this would, and just so you know, this vote would require a majority and, and I, it would help if you would unshare your screen so that we can see everybody. Yeah, could you? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Great, great. Uh, thank, I didn't okay, there we go. Thank you. And again, I cannot raise my hand, lower my hand, nor see you at all. Miss Poole, this is a, a when we uh, when uh, Miss Vickers was talking about um, voting members. These are uh, co-chairs of the various caucuses. For the affirmative action committee, so so that those would be the persons who would have uh, voting power in this uh, particular meeting. Paul, it's just a point of information. There are yeah. voting members who do not have their screen for whatever reason. Maybe they can't or whatever uh, that do not have video access on their screen, like That's Mary and and so forth. So those individuals wouldn't be allowed to or wouldn't be able to physically put up their hand for you to count. Well, Mary you know? can put up her hand. I, I see she doesn't have her screen up, so I can still see her hand. And uh, Rusty was the same way. So I can still see your hand if you, uh, and if you can't, for some reason, if you just like dialing up on your phone or something and you just need to tell me, just we'll do it that way. So just in uh, case you. Uh, no, so you're, you how you're your gonna take a vote of someone, I'm sorry, say that one more time. So you're saying that if your camera isn't on to put up your hand and you can still see it? No, I, when I say put up your hand, I mean uh, like put up your, your hand like, in the like if you're raising your hand within the uh the zoom meeting not like physically raise your hand uh i'm sorry okay. i should have clarified that can I'm, we do I'm a roll call, call vote yeah do a roll call i just wanted to have it accurate so i can see so i can but, count, but so a I roll can call would do that yeah okay i got you got you got you okay we'll do it that way thank you sir all right um uh, so <laughs> again the um the, the 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 vote on the table is to uh the vote is to table uh the passing of the procedural rules to the next meeting so uh to table it all in favor um mary for yay or nay nay all right uh bob baker nay uh miss islam nay you say yay or nay Nay. All right. Uh, Jerry Powell. Nay. Uh, Mary Ann Clater. I vote to table. All right. Marlene Midget. Nay. Marilyn Monahan. You said nay? Okay. All right. Uh, 
Rosemary Ketchum. No. All right. All right. Uh, Cody Thompson. Nay. Kelly Elkins. Nay. Rusty Williams. Nay. Kim Felix. I'll, I'll come back to you. All right, uh, Charlie, is Charlie still not here? Still not on. Oh, sorry. All right, did um, you call my name? Did you say? Yes, I did. Oh, I'm, I, I moved the table. Okay. Do I, I vote for the proxy too or no? Uh, Selena, can she, she vote for the proxy? I think she uh, can. I, I'm not. I'm not voting. And um, no, no, no. Uh, Kim asking. She, she she wants to vote on behalf of uh, Charlie Mullen. She's not here. Did Charlie, did, is there a, a proxy sent in? I know that he, he How would he have known to send a proxy when that rule was just instituted today? Um, I understand that you wanted to read something from him. I think that that can come later, but uh, so I don't, I don't think that there was a proxy sent in. How would he have sent in a proxy when that rule was just instituted today? I mean, I would today? allow it. I, I, I don't have a problem with it. You, okay. If you want to vote for him, you can. No, I'm not going to vote on his behalf because I think that's BS, but I'm just saying he's been disenfranchised. That makes no sense, but go ahead. I got you. All right, Seth. Obviously, yes. Yeah, I vote to table. Okay. Uh, Mary? I vote to table. All right. Emily? Nay. Dottie? Nay. All right, uh, so it looks like we have one, two, three, four, five, six, Ed, seven. Hollis, you forgot yeah. Emily. Uh, no, I, I, I got it. I got you, Emily. Didn't I get you, Emily? Yeah, he got me. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah, so it um, looks like we got a over, well, the majority of nays, so um, the, the tabling will, did not pass. So we'll, uh, we'll go back to, uh, and I'll, Seth, I believe you had another motion that you wanted to make. In regards yeah, I, to Rule 13? I, I, yeah, I would like to strike rule, move to amend to strike Rule 13 completely. Okay. All right. Do we have a second I, on that? I'll second that. Second that. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Do, we, do we have any discussion on that or can we go to the vote? All right. Go ahead, uh, Cody. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, my question on this, if we would go through with this motion, would that impede us from a, an ability to have any discussion whatsoever about any business that might arise if we decide, or if you know something comes up that um, there might be something we need to discuss outside of a formal meeting, would that impede our ability to have a discussion whatsoever or would that be in violation of these rules? Okay, so the question that you're asking is that if we like don't pass these rules, would that impede our ability to have discussions like far as on the agenda items? Is that what I'm understanding? No, no, my, my question is if we vote for this motion, which would strike number 13 in its entirety, I believe. Mm -hmm. And if we did that, would that impede us, the co-chairs, from having the ability to discuss anything that was not um, or that was business related outside of a formal meeting? Would that impede us from that ability to do so? No, I think what, what 13 does in this essence, it just gives Mary and myself just the authority just to act and do things in between meetings. That's all. I, I can't I hear you, Hollis. Oh, sorry. Can you, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? I heard you. Okay. Let me turn my volume up a little bit. All right. I think what they what number 13 of the procedural rules articulates is that it gives Mary and myself the, the authority to just to, to, to act in between meetings. I, that's all it does. Um, so I don't think it would impede the co-chairs from doing any other work or anything like that. One one second, because maybe I'm misunderstood in that. Yeah. The way, let me see. I gotta pull it back up again. Draft by those. Uh, which is a separate request to not have so many different email threads. Mm -hmm. um, but okay, maybe I misinterpreted that. I read it the way I read it. Um, 
if that's how you you understand it, and that's fine. But I was understanding it that it, was, it wasn't just the two co-chairs of the AA committee, but it was also the, the co-chairs of all the caucuses. Is that yeah. not? Okay, thank you. I got I'm you. good. Um, go ahead, Mr. Baker, then we'll come to Seth. <clears throat> I'd like to speak in favor of the leading 13. I think that for one reason, it's not a, a procedural rule for handling this meeting. It's really something that should be dealt with later in the agenda as a resolution of what authority to actually give to the co-chairs in between meetings. And, and it's, not a, it's not a rule that governs how this, act, this meeting is conducted. So I would, I would uh, support uh, deleting it at this time and dealing with that issue somewhere else. All right, uh, good. Um, do we have any other discussion on uh, you know, removing 13? 13 from the procedural rules. Uh, we'll, we'll get to Jared and then we'll come to Seth. Go ahead, Jared. Sorry, still getting used to unmuting. Uh, so just to, uh, I guess some general questions or like, you know, maybe something for the consideration of the committee would be in striking 13, does that then mean that the rule of reference for the actions of the chair and the committee in the interim reverts back to uh, Robert's Rules of Order, and then that would be superseded by the bylaws of the Democratic Party for the actions of the chair and the committee? That's how I understand it. Okay. Um, with that, then, I don't have any like additional motions to make this, but just I want this to be on the back of everyone's mind. Maybe the thing we could do in order to like, you know, clarify things to the strongest degree would be to then find what those rules and references might be that we will report under. Uh, you know, if that means uh, copying like, you know, whatever chapter it might be of the Democratic bylaws or Robert's Rules of Order on the actions of chairs, I think what we could do is copy and paste that in a document, and then we can distribute that out to the membership. And um, hopefully then that would get everyone more of a um, fundamental understanding of like, you know, where these uh, rules I think are kind of drawn from. Uh, with that, I'll yield back. Uh, great, great advice. Thank you for, the, for that idea. All right. Uh, you can go ahead, Seth. Yeah. Um, so... When it comes to, to this issue, um, um, you know, I think that Rule 13, if it doesn't grant powers beyond, you said that it doesn't grant powers beyond what Robert's Rules um, grants, I don't see the need for it um, because it's, it's our, you know, we, we go by Robert's Rules and like, like Jared said, so I just don't see why, why, why it would be in there if it's, just, if it's just Robert's Rules. So, I mean, that's the clarification that I've been seeking, um, you know, specifically with regard to what the Indigenous Caucus had passed a resolution um, about, would that action be covered by this rule? You, you, you two making a list of nine demands that um, don't really benefit our individual diversity caucuses in any way. All right, uh, thank you for that. Um, do we have any other discussion on this, on Rule 13? I asked a question, Hollis. It was, I asked a question. I'm sorry, what was your question? Could you repeat it? Would Rule 13 give you the power to make a list of demands of Belinda Biafor and send it to her without consulting her? Um, I don't believe that happened. I don't, I don't believe um, that did that happened. I you said what well, the first thing that came in was when I joined this committee was the list of demands and Belinda's responses. So I, I guess what I'm clarifying is that um, Mary nor myself didn't arbitrarily on our own cognitive, you know, just on our own make any sort of the list of demands. We don't, who, who we, would, we, we would not make any sort of the list of demands without checking with the other co-chairs. That wasn't done in a meeting. It was, it was illegally done. That's what our resolution was about. So I'm asking, you know, is there any, are we, are we going to move past that? Or are we going to have more of those actions happening? That's beyond really, the scope. That's the that's the beyond the scope of this discussion. So if you don't have anything further, just about removing thirteen, that's, we can address those at a different time. It's germane, but okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, do we have any discussions? Or any further discussion on thirteen on rule procedure rule thirteen? Sorry. So if we don't, can we just move to a vote? Um. Aye. 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 All those opposed? No. All 
Uh, with that, it looks like uh, we got more uh, in favor of removing it, so it will be removed. So, Celine, could you uh, just pull it up just to show everybody and just remove it? If you wouldn't mind sharing the screen again. All right, um, Mr. Baker. Yes, I would like to move that these procedural rules be in effect um, for this meeting only and that um, they be worked on between and a new set of procedural rules uh, provided at the next meeting. All right, do we have a second? I'll I'll second. I'm sorry, go, go ahead. I believe, uh, Emily, you, you second it? Yeah, I'll second it. All right, do we have any discussion? Uh, point of information, that was an amendment right to the, uh, if, I believe if the uh, uh, secretary wouldn't mind scrolling up, uh, I think it's at the start of where it talks about the effect dates of the rules. Uh, mm -hmm. Just so I can understand uh, Bob's uh, motion correctly, it is just a change. Um, it, it's amending that section of this document, correct? I believe so, I, I believe that. Yeah, right. although, Actually, oh, it says it's actually at the very start where it says draft procedural rules. What I'm um, uh, suggesting is that we just delete and thereafter until superseded by permanent or standing rules. Also, you just want to delete it or do you want to add additional um, wording? I, I think my motion is to just delete that segment um, and the rest of it was just uh, suggestions, I guess. Okay, got you. All right, um, Cody. Thank you. Um, so uh, correct me. So we're passing it, this. This is what we're doing with this particular motion. We want to um, basically say that we're going to pass the, these tonight. We've modified them. We've taken one out. And then now we're going to throw them all away at the end of this. And we're going to start over and make a whole new set of rules for the next meeting? I think essentially that's what we're saying. I think this is just a, a starting point and then we can okay. kind of go from there, unless I'm mistaken. Uh, is Mr. there anything uh, you know, precluding us from all, all changing them again uh, at the next meeting? Like we can, if we decide to, as co-chairs, could we say, you know, we don't like number, whatever, or I'd like to add one. Is there anything in this that says we cannot change and modify these rules? Um, I don't believe so. Mr. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Uh, Baker. I think he can maybe answer the question. You mean at another meeting? Yeah, like I just don't understand. What Can you help me understand why to pass these rules that we've changed and modified for this meeting and then to start all over and start new rules hypothetically at the next meeting? I think... I, I don't understand what the problem is with being able to modify them, add, remove, whatever may be at the next meeting What without, or I just, I don't know. Oh, so your contention is that, um, if I'm understanding you right, you're saying that there's no need to actually throw away the whole rules. Actually, what we can do is just take the rules, you have time to go over them, make your uh, adjustments, add, subtract, and then at the next meeting, actually formalize the, the, the formal procedural rules kind of quasi based off of what we already have. Correct. This is, this is a starting point. I'm just, I'm assuming that these would be the basis for whatever rules we have in the future, unless we just adopt Robert's rules of order. Okay, gotcha. I agree with that. I just have a problem with, you know, the, the verbiage maybe of saying to, of throwing them out. It seems almost redundant to pass all these and make, make them better, you know, for the caucus and then to throw them out. Gotcha. All right, um, uh, Marianne and Rusty. Well, I don't really, I, I think that um, I agree with Bob because as I pointed out before, we haven't really had, we're just rushing through these. And uh, I mean, I would think the proper thing to do maybe, you know, is to refer these to our bylaws committee uh, for them to work on until we get come back to our next meeting. And they, you know, they would be able to work on the these, um, you know, for these to be for this meeting, 
and be referred to the bylaws committee um, to make you know changes and suggestions to bring back to us. Okay, do you want to go ahead and make a motion on that? I'm yeah, I make a motion that, well, I don't know if I can because mm. what do I need to do because me. Bob has made a motion. Made a motion. Yeah. His motion for, you know, proceeds. You can make a motion, but his is first and then there's, that would be a secondary. Okay, okay so you, you want me to go ahead and say? Well, we'll come back. We'll, we'll come back to you. Yeah, I'll, I'll come back to you before we, um, before we do, after we deal with Bob's motion. So I'll, I'll come back to you. All right, uh, I believe Rusty, you had your hand up. I took it down. Okay. All right, do we have anybody else? Uh, do, do, oh, Seth, you had your hand up? Yeah, I did. I, yeah, I just want to say that I actually think that um, it would be wise for us to not try to rehash this unnecessarily at the next meeting. I mean, if you look at this, it's just a, li a list of rules for virtual meetings. It's quite good. Um, and I don't see the need to necessarily rehash everything um, at the next meeting because this has already taken an hour of our time. So, all right. Thank you for that. Do we have any other comments or discussion before we move to a vote? Go ahead, Cody. Thank you. Yeah. Um, like I understand, you know, all of the intention, but I, I think we all want to you know, be able to modify this document to make it better uh modify our rules to make them better take out things that are becoming tedious i totally agree i just don't think that we need to completely tear it all down to start over again um to reiterate what seth said i agree with that completely um there's nothing in this document the rules that preclude us from basically saying okay i don't like this rule okay let's add this rule um so i i think we should just uh not support this motion thank you all right uh, we got uh, Jared and then uh, Rusty. To very briefly articulate a thought on this, I believe it'd probably be in our best interest uh, with the um, Marianne's intention to offer an amendment to refer to uh, the bylaws committee uh, to reject this motion and then to consider that. I would add um, advisement on Marianne's motion to refer to the bylaws committee that we still adopt this as our current rules of like, you know, procedure and order uh, for like these virtual meetings and the interlude why perhaps we can further illustrate out in that uh, question or motion of how such a referral would look. Okay, so just as just so I'm understanding, uh, and, and Marianne and uh, Jerry, you can uh, jump jump in if I'm incorrect. Basically, what, what you I think what you both are saying is that uh, we adopt the uh, the current procedural rules and then refer those said uh, procedural rules to the to the bylaws committee to actually work on for the next meeting. Is that what I'm hearing? For, that was uh, my advisement, or at least more my current thoughts are. I think Mary has some, she said let, something similar. Let me step in if I may. Yeah. I, I think I should just withdraw this motion. I think some of the other suggestions make more sense. Point of order. I, I not trying to be paying over Robert Schultz or anything, but I think the motion already belongs to the committee. So I think we have to vote it down. I don't think we can withdraw. Okay. All right. Uh, go ahead, Kim. Yeah, I was just wondering um, if you were to adopt the rules or temporarily adopt the rules for the purpose of facilitating this meeting, wouldn't you be bound by the rules? So the motions would have had to have been provided in writing, preferably before the meeting. And then if made in the meeting, should have been typed in the chat feature, which I'm assuming one of you would chat would type in the chat feature. And then the PO would state the question for the benefit of the entire assembly. And then it would be shared on screen, right? Because that was what was written in the rules. So technically we're not even following the same rules that we just put up like hours ago. Inquiry the chair. I'm sorry, what'd you say? Inquiry the chair. So um, I believe what Kim was asking, you know, with these rules, but we haven't voted on these rules. The rules aren't in effect. Is that correct? They would correct. be effect after we votes on them? Correct. Right. Okay. But, but for the purposes of voting on them, the actual motion needs to be put in the chat so that everybody can read it and we all understand what we're voting on. If the rule, if, if it's my understanding, if the rules had already been adopted, they're not into it. They're not in effect yet. Yeah, I think that's why but, we did it first, just so we can get that going. Totally understand that. Then the the motion needs to be restated so that we know exactly what we're voting on. Because so far there was a motion that was was made, but then rescinded, and then Jared 
recommended uh, a different motion that was predicated by Marianne. So now I have no clue what we're voting on exactly. That's if exactly. I could jump in with a sorry. I was just going to raise a point of order. Perhaps the best thing to do then uh, on the advisement of Kim is I, I think if that were the, uh, uh, you know, following the things is maybe we just have the document up and then we can actually see like, you know, what the thing is. And then we can type with the document what the specific motion is on the floor because um, uh, the order of the motion is going to be, uh, we have to vote on the uh, amendment to strike uh, the ending there as like, you know, yeah, see, and, and therefore until superseded by permanent or standing rules, that is the current motion on the floor is a motion to amend by striking that. All right. Do we have a, a second on that? The, that the motion's already been second. It's, it's already on the floor. Second. Okay, got you, got you. All right. Uh, so do we have any discussion on that or can we move to a vote? All right. Uh, so just restate that one more time, Jerry, so everybody has it and then we will vote on it. Yes, absolutely. And um Thank you. So uh, Bob uh, made the motion uh, to amend this document by striking and therefore until superseded by permanent or standing rules of this document. And that was in the first paragraph of the draft procedure rules uh, for anyone that can uh, see it displayed um, on their screen. All right. So all those in favor, please state uh, yay. All those opposed? Yeah. Nay. 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 All right. Gotcha. Thank you. So uh it will not pass. And I believe uh I, I don't know if, if Marianne or Jared, if you want to um if you I believe you had a, a, an additional motion or another motion. I believe it was similar. So I yeah, yeah. I mean I uh, I will you help Marianne. us here. Well, um, I was just one going to make a motion uh, to, you know, where we have, well, on that sentence there, I guess, and um, have this referred to the bylaws committee for uh, any further amendments that might be necessary. Okay. Would that motion include passing the procedural rules for this meeting and then refer to the um, to the bylaw committee? If I'm, I just well, wanna... I, well, I have. I have some amendments I want to make on number 14. So I don't know. Do you want to? I don't know how we want to proceed because I, you know, I'm sitting here right now trying to read them. Gotcha. All right. All right. Uh, I'm, we have a, we do, do we have a second on that motion before we move the rest? Of what motion? Can you clarify? What's that? Can you clarify what motion? I believe Marianne's motion was that uh, the procedural rules be referred to the bylaws committee for the uh, for the next meeting to be clarified. And but then she said she wanted to amend number fourteen. So which which one does Marianne want to move at this time? Okay, Marianne, which one did you want to do uh, first? Well, maybe we'll do fourteen, and then that way you'll be able that if that's all of the let's make sure we have all of the amendments, and then we can go back and do that one. Then we'll be over with. Gotcha. That's what I'm saying. All right. Could you bring that back up, Selena? So do we have a second on amending? Uh, we'll, we'll read it first and then uh, we'll, we'll ask for a second on it just so everybody can see it. Point of order. What What's the proposed amendment to 14? Okay. I was going to pull it up and then I'll, I'll let Marianne ex explain it. Um, I wanted to amend where we're giving the co-chairs the authority to remove members for good cause. I believe, I, I don't really know how I want to word this because like I said, I haven't really had time to think about it. Uh, I, I want that authority to be with the majority of the, um, uh, of the committee. I don't want that authority to just lie with making that decision. So I don't know if somebody can help me out on the wording. You know, like I said, if I had time to look over this, you know, I would have been able to write it down. But... So do we have some language somewhere else about, you know, things that have to go through the committee? I mean, I, I'm totally lost right now. Yeah, I mean, you know, I've had five documents to try to look six documents in a 20, you know, I don't know, maybe what, 30 hours. Okay. All right. Um, I, I believe Rusty had his hand up, and then we can then we'll go to Kim. 
my question was just answered. I was just trying to get clarification oh. on the motion before us right now. Okay, was, thank, yeah. thank you. All right, Kim. Yeah, I was wondering if you could define um, what good cause is, uh, what that means, who determines what good cause is, and um, I don't know if you asked for a second on that. I'm sorry, I didn't. I missed that. Um, okay. I didn't. Um, okay. Do we have a second on Marianne's motion? Is Marianne's motion what's now up there in yellow on the screen? Yeah, to, to remove that. Or no, Selena just changed it. Could yeah. you go back to the original um, text? Well, I can't. I'm the original sure. text gave that authority to the chair. Just yeah. hit backspace. This so, changes it to the full a, a majority of the AAC. So, is that your uh, motion, Marianne? I guess my question is, Marianne, does that, what I just wrote, does that um, convey what you were expressing? Yes, I didn't want that just to be in the hands of three people, but in the hands of our committee. I'll second that. Okay. All right. Um, uh, Cody? Um, it's, I just have a question. Um, like, I, I, I agree that we need to be able to, you know, hypothetically, in the worst case scenario, remove members, like what we do in the House of Delegates. Um, but I think the wording, like a majority, that could be problematic, um, you know, based on a quorum, you know, we're not, there's not a lot of us. So I, I feel like, you know, maybe a, I'm not making a motion, but, or maybe I am, but that needs to be clarified definitely in some way to more mimic what I think we do in the House of Representatives or House of Delegates and the Senate to remove our members who we feel are, you know, have committed either crimes or not working towards our, our goals or whatever. Um, is that kind of the content, Mary, Marianne, is that, um, what was your, your motion? Was that to strike that or was it to to edit that or what was the motion? Marianne's motion was to, um, I, that didn't have that language originally where it's highlighted in uh, yellow. It just said that the co-chairs could remove uh, a member for good cause. And Selena changed it to the majority. Do you want to change? Are you from what you're stating? Is that you want to change it to like a two thirds, three four, something specific? Uh, yeah, like I, specific I, like, number? I would make that motion that um, it would be not the co-chairs, but that it would be a like a two thirds majority of um, the co-chairs. All right. So do you want to make that motion to to just do you want to make that motion or yeah, I'll make that motion or I, I, uh, I, point I, of order. Don't we have to go through Mary Ann's first? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just I'm asking just what is, can I also get clarification? Hold, hold on. Can you hold on just a second, Cody? Um, I think what you're trying to do is make a, a, an amendment. Um, yeah. Hold on just a second. Um, well, technically, I didn't get the language. So if you want to make it to what Cody is saying, remember, I asked for assistance in because, you know, like I said, I, did, I haven't had time to thoroughly, uh, you know, think out what I wanted to say. But so um, if you put in the, the two thirds, you can change it back to the two thirds because I never officially gave the language that. Um, I wanted to use. I had X for assistance on that. All right. Thank you. All right. So you so are, are you, are what, so Mary, so are you, I'm sorry. Is, go ahead, go ahead. is the assistance given that you want this to be two thirds, Marianne? Yeah, I probably wouldn't have any problem with two thirds. Okay. Unless is anybody else have any other suggestion? So, Cody, you're saying in the house you all usually do two thirds. It has to be a two thirds vote, yeah, to remove. Um, it can be a majority to censure, um, but it to remove a member, which has has it's only happened once, in my knowledge, was it's a two thirds vote. Okay, what about two thirds plus one? May, may I 
so two thirds in terms of uh, Robert's rules, usually um, uh, that, that a two thirds will be appropriate, but also I think that you need to clarify, is this two thirds of present and voting? Two thirds of present voting, like the two of uh, two thirds of people currently here, of the caucus. Mm -hmm. Your options are two thirds of present voting, or two thirds of the entire membership. Oh, and I okay. think you need to clear. I think for this type of thing, you need to clarify. Okay, I see what you're saying, um, Marianne. I would recommend because um, how it works in the house is it's of current of present voting. But um, considering our much smaller numbers, I think it would be more appropriate to have, you know, of the whole. But that's up. It's up. It's your motion. Yeah, I, I, I definitely would want of the full. I don't, you know, just because our numbers are small. All right. All right. Um, uh, Kim, I believe you had your hand up. Oh, I was wanting um, clarification on what good cause um, constitute, you know, because if two thirds of people thought that they should excommunicate someone because they didn't like the color of their skin, that's a good cause, quote unquote. I'm not saying that that's the case here, but I'm just saying that that could be two thirds of the majority could say, yeah, that is a good cause. I don't, she's a little too dark for me. I don't like her. So let's go on ahead and get her out of here. So what is good cause exactly? Yeah. Um, I think when it was originally drafted, when we thinking of good cause, uh, we were thinking more towards disruption, um, uh, sort of like a dereliction of duty, things of that. So maybe that actually needs to be spelled out instead of just- I think you need to say that. Like if it's a violation of an actual rule, then of course yeah. you, could, you could bring somebody up on that particular yeah. charge. But to say for good cause, you know, there was a member of the Federation of Democratic Women who excommunicated somebody on quote, good cause, because she was talking about um, actually a moral issue. And so that's that's not a good cause in most people's eyes, but because the, the committee that was voting on it didn't like her, they went and they excommunicated her. And I don't want to see the same thing perpetrated here. All right, uh, good point. So just to, can we add, can, uh, so I guess we can add that language. Um, uh, could we make an amendment to, um, to Mary's um, to motion? Yes. Um, so, do you want to use? Kim, would you like to do that formally? Who, me or Kim? I, I heard two people talking just, at the same time, so I don't Kim, know what the question uh, brought is. It up. Just uh, make the. I think it should be an actual, like a violation of something. For example, if it's a violation of the bylaws or a violation of whatever rules or orders or whatever it is that you are going to eventually enact, whether it be this particular document here or the actual bylaws of the party. It should state that clearly, not just good cause. Just to, to clarify, in the in the in the West Virginia bylaws, they have um, uh, they have the term good cause, and they also use the um, um, have a process where uh, people bring forth uh, you know statements. Yeah, that's very troubling. I don't want to use the wording or the phraseology, good cause. I think we should move away from that and have an actual tangible reason as to why you can excommunicate someone from a group. Um, may I suggest the verbiage that Hollis used earlier? Um, I think Hollis, you said uh, two things, dereliction of duties and um, disruption. Is that correct? Yeah, and I, I would add, um, just violation of rules, bylaws, procedures, things. I would add that as well. I don't like the word disruption in there. Um, you know, somebody could have a very passionate disagreement with with the co-chairs or whatever, and that could be considered a disruption. I, I don't. I think that could be problematic. I, I really don't think we need to go down that road. Gotcha. Agreed. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, I'm going to, Cody, did you still have your hand up or you just, you just left it up? Let me, let me, I'm going to go to Marianne, then I'll come back to you. And I think Seth had his hand up. I'll come to Seth. Go I'm ahead, Marianne. 
I'm, I'm needing a little stronger word than just violation of rules, bylaws. Just for some history, I was removed from a Democratic committee um, for writing a, a op-ed, uh, and they said I was causing disharmony. So I need a little stronger language, you mean, because you can you can say that I violated a rule that, mm, what did it really do when I violated the rule? So I, I guess it needs to be something excessive. I, you know what I'm saying? You know, I'm just kidding. Because then I was accused of violating bylaws, and <laughs> which was real, in my eyes, it really wasn't violating bylaws. It was a sentence up there about harmony. So that's why I'm, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to put anybody through what I went through. All right, and let me, and I'm sorry, and I, I apologize if I'm out of order in, in this. Um, is this something we could possibly um, maybe table, like far as this one, is, and, and actually have the bylaws committee actually kind of work through this? Um, is this something we could, I'm, and I apologize for being out of order. I've just, I, we're already an hour in and we haven't moved past the second agenda item which this is very important. We definitely have to cover all this. Um, but as far as number 14, um, is this something that maybe that the, um, the bylaws committee could actually dig in a little bit better to actually find the correct language? I just want to throw that out there. Go ahead. Uh, I'll, uh, go ahead, Jared. So I think what, so just, I, I think for everyone's clarification, my understanding is that Kim was putting forward the motion to change the language, which would be offered as the uh, a second a secondary amendment, which is allowed underneath the Roberts Rules of Order. So I think then we should determine if that was first and second. I think then we should go through with like you know making sure that we want to agree to the secondary amendment that would take us back to the original amendment, which would then be as amended. We agree to that or we disagree with that, and then I think the correct course of action would be for us to then refer this to bylaws as need. I mean, I, I, I don't foresee us needing to remove a chair. I know we put a lot of time in this already. Um, I, I do agree with like concerns that we might remove other members. I don't want this to set a precedent in any way, shape or form that would allow for that to happen without like, you know, a much more understood meaning of what good cause is. But that would be my recommendation is we go through the orders of the proposals and then we go and then make the decision on whether or not to table and refer. Thank you for that. Um, I'm gonna let uh we'll let uh Seth and we'll let Cody speak and then we'll uh we'll, I'll come back to you, Jerry. Go ahead, Seth. Uh, two things. One, I just want a clarification. Uh, mm -hmm. This is just about subcommittees, right? You you don't. Um, there's nothing here to remove chairs from their diversity. Class. Nah, this is subcommittees. Right. Okay. okay. Um, and then I had another. Um, uh, okay, she she fixed it there. Dereliction was this stuff. I'm sorry, but I have a point of information. The actual wording says the chair or co-chairs, as they may, as the case may be. So it doesn't. It does include uh, the sub, the the co-chairs and the caucuses. The caucus co-chairs. Oh uh, well, that I, I don't. Based think on that, the language that's written there. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that was the intent. I, I this was, to my knowledge, just referring to co-chairs. So we need to fix that language. The subcommittees. I'm sorry. Not, uh, not, um, we, I don't. All right, uh, Cody. Yeah, um, I, I, I think we're heading in the right direction with this. I do think it needs some sp spruced up a little bit, you know, to be, uh, because it's ultimately no one's goal to remove anybody, whether or not we get along with, you know, or agree or whatever it may be. I don't think that's anyone's goal. Um, and to come to the table with that, you know, that fear that he's on the back is, is not beneficial. Um, however, you know, looking at, you know, potentially down the road, you know, derelict of duties, if we don't have somebody who's coming to the meetings, you know, over time and time and time, we can't get a hold of them. If they commit some, uh, if they're doing stuff we don't, that don't uphold our democratic values, um, going to the Capitol for the insurgency, things like that. That's what we did with in our house. We were going to remove Derek Evans, but um, I definitely think it's important to have this because otherwise it really constricts us to um, what business we can take. And if somebody is coming in um, with uh, hostile and 
Um, we need an ability as a caucus. That's why I think it's important to have a two thirds, you know, so it's not just a one on one thing going back and forth. It's something to protect, but it also it should only be used in the utmost, um, you know, in, the, in, the, in a rare, rare, rare situation and with the utmost sanctity to keep, you know, the caucus together, but in the situation where we need to remove someone to have this on there. But I also think it would be a good idea to send this to the, um, the bylaw committee. All right, Mark, uh, go ahead, Seth. Then we'll come to Marlene. Yeah, I'm just wondering where we would, um, who, why would the Affirmative Action Committee have the power to interfere at all with anybody's individual diversity caucus? That should be up to these caucuses. Um, and the way that we're formed, it seems that the bylaws of the Democratic Party, um, it sounds like we answer to the executive committee. So I would think that that's a gross overreach to try to remove somebody from their individual caucus, um, uh, especially whenever uh, the, the bylaws clearly say that we have to get permission for everything the caucus does from the executive committee. Uh, no, they, it's, I, well, I think what we're talking about is just sub. Well, Cody said, Cody said that if somebody didn't come to the meetings and all that, that we should reserve uh, the right yeah, to yeah, do that's, that. That's the, and I just don't think that that's appropriate. Yeah, that, that's beyond the scope of, you know, what we're talking about here. Yeah, this is just subcommittee. I think Marlene. Um, yes. First of all, um, I think that we need to get the motion on the floor and move along. We have beat it to death. Yeah. And pass it on to the bylaws. And second, if you're not coming to the meeting, you're not helping the, the program. So that could be part of it. That's all. Okay. All right, I'll let Bob speak and then I'll refer it back to uh, Jared or uh, Mary and get the motion on the floor. Mr. Becker, go ahead, sir. Yes, I, I would suggest an additional change to the wording. So where it says, has the authority to remove members for violation, it should say, change it to add authority to remove members of the subcommittees for violation of rules, bylaws, procedures. So that it's clear that this is talking about subcommittees and not removing caucus chairs from their caucuses. Yeah. All right. Selena, did you did you get that? All right. And I, I will. I'm, uh, sure. whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold up. I'm sorry. Just hold up just a second. So are we? I need to just clarify. Are we still in? Um, uh, uh, is this Mary Ann still? Um, um, Smithing this so that it is her motion. It, and yeah, if it I, is, and if she's agreeable to that, then I can add that. Yeah, that's why I, I was going to go back to her now. Okay, good. So, uh, Marianne, go ahead. Um, also, I wanted to, in front of violation, put gross violation, uh, and also add about the subcommittee that it is to remove uh, members from the subcommittee, however, Bob said it, um, for gross violation. Does that read correctly now, Marianne? You gotta remove the F. You got an F in the uh, cross. Is that is that what you were uh is that correct, Marianne? I, I was reading it. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, I think I'll be fine. All right, um, go, go ahead, Kim. Yeah, I was gonna say, um, so does this, if I understand this correctly, um, not only gives the, the AAC the ability to remove someone from a committee, but they're the only ones who will allow someone to join a subcommittee. So if a, um, someone says, hey, I, I'd like to participate and be a member of the planning committee, the AAC is allowed to say nope. You don't. We don't want you on the AA on the um, 
planning subcommittee. Is that correct? Am I reading this correctly? Because it says the co-chair shall appoint members to the subcommittees and the chair or co-chairs as the case may be. I'm, I'm, I'm not understanding your, your question. Are you, are, is your question that the co-chairs, they have the power to appoint and remove? Is that, is that your question? Yeah, it says the AA committee may create any subcommittee deemed necessary to carry out the proposals of the AAC. The co-chairs, meaning you and Mary, shall appoint members to the subcommittees that would in this case be planning and bylaws. And you could remove anybody from those committees we with a two thirds with a two thirds majority, right? But yeah, so nobody can volunteer to be on a committee. You have to appoint them. You and Mary have to appoint them to join that committee. Is that correct? I think we're appointing members of the subcommittee. I guess that reads like that, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I mean, you take issue with that or do you need to change it? I do, but there's another motion on the floor, so I'll have to wait until that one is voted on so that we could edit that. I just don't know why we would limit participants from offering and or um, providing their gifts and talents to be on committees. Why are we limiting them in that capacity? All right, um, Marianne, do you want to? Um, so we, we got your motion on the floor to change. So I, if, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Marianne. Um, so your motion is that we uh, we change the language as far as uh, removing persons from subcommittees, and um, that the this this portion be referred as far as you know uh, have have a more precise language be referred to the bylaws committee. Am I correct? Um. No, I, I had said after we finished with all our amendments, this whole thing was going to be referred to the bylaws. Anyway. Yeah, the whole thing referred to. I'm I'm sorry. About yeah, that. so you know, we can just go ahead, you know, because it looks like Kim's going to have another amendment, and so. Okay. You know, to this section. All right. All right. So, do you want to? we make that amendment, Salinas? Can we make that amendment first, or do we need to vote on Mary Ann's motion? Right, you're muted. I'm sorry. Yes, if this is, um, if there's no further, uh, I, I actually, I think we just need to see if there's any other uh, comments for or against this, and people need to vote on uh, this change here in yellow. All right, uh, do we have any additional comments or, or concerns on, on uh, what we've changed thus far, as far as the amendments? All right, so, um, and just take it by voice, all those in favor of, um, uh, the amendments that have taken place is section 14 of the procedural rules and that the procedural rules in totality will be referred to the bylaws. Uh, hold on, hold on, Paul. It's not, don't, don't do the referring yet. Let's just do just this. Made it in one. Mm -hmm. Okay. You just want to do 14. We should do 14 first and then, okay, got you. All right. Um, so all those in favor of the changes is highlighted in yellow change section 14 of the procedural rules. Uh, all in favor, just aye, or excuse me, yay. Aye. 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 All, those, all those opposed? All right. So uh, looks like we're going to change that. So, um, and then we will just, all those in favor of um, having okay. the, go ahead. Um, how, um, so can we, um, so, you want to, I suggest that we restate the motion and then ask if there's any discussion on that. I thought we had already had a discussion on, sorry. Um, so the, the, the additional- Point of, point of order. Yeah. I think the motion now is, that's on the floor until some amendments are made to it is to adopt these rules. I don't think we've gotten there yet. But there are more amendments that people are suggesting. Yeah, I think Kim had an amendment and, and, and Mary Ann still had it as uh, far as uh, if the rules were adopted that um, they'd be referred to the bylaws committee. I think I think referring to the bylaws committee is something to do after we adopt them for this yeah. meeting, if we're going to adopt them for the meeting. That makes sense. All right, um, we'll, we'll just hold off on your amendment, uh, excuse me, on your motion, Mary, just give us one second. Okay, Kim, uh, you can go ahead with your um, your comments on uh, revising uh, additional revision, revisings of section 14. No, I was just gonna say that um, instead of making 
the opportunity instead of restricting the opportunity for people to to offer their gifts and talents on by participating in the subcommittees um, that the appointment of a person on a subcommittee shouldn't be limited to the co-chairs. In other words, anybody who wants to participate on a subcommittee should be allowed to do so. I don't, I'm not sure why we would restrict that. Well, again, the thought process is that we're gonna have a lot of subcommittees, so we didn't wanna stretch anybody thin. Um, yeah, but that's for the person to decide, not for the co-chairs well, to decide. I'm just, I'm just telling you our thought process. That's I understand that. Yeah, I'm just telling you our thought process and we can have an open discussion. Our thought process was that we're going to have a lot of subcommittees in addition to all the co-chairs. You would have your own individual caucuses and your own individuals uh, caucus and business to deal with. So I thought process that we would try to um, uh, have everybody on a coach to have everybody participate in at least one subcommittee that way they can give their full time and attention and you're not on five different subcommittees and not able to adequately provide anything because you're already so stretched thin so that was the thought process in um in sort of and our appointments of you know of, of doing that and sort of limiting the number of co uh, subcommittees a person can be on so, Selena, did you? Did yeah, you I just wanted to add just a small cl uh, clarification on this, just so you guys know, uh, Robert's Rules has two, basically two ways of um, putting people on committees. It's e either usually election by members or appointment. All right. Do we have any other uh, comments on that? <laughs> Did we have a second? On, I'm sorry, I, I went right in. Did we have a second on Kim's uh, uh, motion to 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 change uh, that section of Rule 14? Was that a motion? I, I believe it was a motion. Yeah, okay. that was a motion. Correct, Kim. Right. Could you state the motion, uh, Kim? I'm so sorry. I have it correctly. Yeah, the motion was to update the language so that the co-chairs um, would not limit anybody who wants to participate on a by a subcommittee. Do we have a second on that? A second. All right. All right. Uh, no, Jerry, can, I, let me get some, can I get some language? Uh, let me get this. Are you waiting on me to provide the language? I'm sorry. Um, well, it would be nice if you would. Yes, please. Sure. So you don't have to strike out that the co-chair shall appoint members. You can say that they can appoint members. You don't have to strike out the entire sentence. So instead of shall, that they can, and that members are free to join subcommittees. Some of that rest that sentence is a fragment. Right. Went that part struck out, Kim. Yeah, because I don't I don't really know what that means in the chair of co-chairs as the case may be. It, I'm not sure well, what that means. Well, when it before the whole thing was amended, it kind of made sense. But that but since we've um, added it, it, it doesn't. Okay, so everything in yellow is Kim's. Amendment. All right, uh, do we have any other discussion on this? Go ahead, Marianne. 
I, I think also, and it's a shame that I even have to mention this, is that uh, I, we may possibly need to add something that, you know, we all will be notified when people, because I, I'm under the, I'm, the reason I brought it up is because I'm in confusion about Charlie. I, I learned in the listening that I think that he might be on the planning committee and then he might also be a co-chair. And none of us were ever notified. So I was a little confused about some of his emails. I kept wondering, why is he apologizing? So, so we may have to, just, you know, add something, you know, and if Kim, you know, might want to just put it in with her so we don't have to do another, you know, that uh, the full committee will be notified when um, new members have been, at, you know, appointed or at, well, added, added or removed, actually. So, well, we would be there for the removal. So if they've been added so that we would know that they've been added. Point of order, I, I think we're getting far afield yeah. beyond rules for this meeting. Yeah, yeah well, I think, uh, I think it's definitely something. Some... You don't send stuff out in a timely manner so people, I mean, this should have been in the we understand, Bible. We, we understand that, um, but I think that's something that we can- um, I, I have a point of order, uh, real quick. Yes. Oh, you froze. I think Seth froze up. He froze up. You froze up, Seth. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we got you now. Okay, I just said that, you know, we don't know how long it'll take for us to get new actual rules. Um, and we struck down Bob's amendment earlier. So, you know, these are going to be our rules. And I think it's important that we get it right and take the time to get it right now. Um, because these are what we're going to be working for for the foreseeable future. Good point. To that, um, and I'll just say, like, from here on out, like, when we're going to have to work on a document, um, you know, that holds as much weight as these rules, like, I, I am a little frustrated that didn't uh, had we have we received these in in plenty of time to sit down and craft amendments and um you know figure out what we wanted to do this would have gone a lot smoother but you know here we are it's five after ten and we're still talking about you know amending the rules that are dictating how this meeting is supposed to be governed um i don't know i just really frustrated with with the way that this is playing out right now uh, noted, and uh, like I said, we apologize about that. So, um, and yeah, this this definitely won't happen again. And uh, like I said, um, I definitely apologize, and uh, th this will not happen again. Um, so, as to Kim's point, um, do we have any further discussions on Kim's uh, motion as far as um, language? in uh, section 14 of the procedural rules. Do you have your hand up, Mary? You just, you just kept it up. All right, Seth, go ahead. I'm for sure about what, you know, for, oh, so do we need to go on Kim's motion? I mean, is Kim willing to add in, you know, that we will be notified? Oh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, so I just went for sure. Um, Are we going to wait and do another? Yeah, so, Look, for the interest of, or for the public interest, because I know people are tired and they want to like move on. Um, I think a couple things need to happen. I'm happy to add that, but um, I really do think that there needs to be time for people to read this document and provide their amendments, perhaps in a secondary meeting or something of that nature. I know that we've come this far. We're, we're an hour and 43 minutes in. I'll be very candid with you. There are still other rules on the list that I, I think need amending, but this is not the time or the place to do it. Like I, I can't commit to, to staying on this meeting all night. I have, you know, papers and homework and stuff like that, that I got to get in. So I honestly don't know what the best way to move forward is. I don't know why there's such a rush to, to get things done and not do them in an appropriate manner because we end up in a situation like this. So I'm not purporting to know the answers. I'm not blaming anybody for anything. I'm just saying, like I said in the email, um, I don't know why we aren't taking the time to do the things that we need to do correctly because we find ourselves in this situation and it doesn't really help anybody. 
Like it doesn't accomplish anything, quite frankly. I got you. And, and, I, and like I said, I'll take blame for this. I, I'll, I'll just put it on my shoulders and I'll take the blame for this. Like I said, this won't happen again in anything um, that this detail we will, uh, before our next meetings, we'll maybe have, it won't, it won't be in this sort of timely, just trust me. We'll, we'll send out things in a more timely manner and be more uh, thoughtful about everybody's time. So like I said, I'll take the blame for this. Well, okay, so in that case, it. yeah, I'm happy to add that language to to the amendment just for the purpose of getting the vote out and, and moving forward. So if there could just be some type of notification of what subcommittees are available, and then if somebody is has volunteered or has been appointed to that subcommittee, just for the um, in the spirit of transparency, so that everybody knows who's on what committee. So you can add that language. That's great. Steph, I believe you had your hand up. Mary, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Did you have a question, Mary, or you just kept your hand up? No, okay. I took it back down. Kim went ahead and added it, so I don't have. Gotcha. All right. So, do we have any other discussion on this um, on on this section of um, Rule 14? Rule 14. Rule 14. Alice, I just want to offer some information for you and for the other members, since it's getting late and there's been um, some you know, concern that has been uh, provided uh, of people wanting to have more time um, and, you know, and referring this, you know, some discussion referring to this to the bylaws committee. Um, it is within your all's purview to adjourn this meeting to a different time um, so that it's still the same meeting, it's still the same agenda. Um, but if people want, want to, um, Anyway, you have the option of either adjourn the, adjourning this meeting to another time, um, or um, you know, depending on where Kim stands on the motion, uh, you know, referring and then adjourn to the bylaw committee and then adjourning. Just giving you options because it's getting late. Thank you. Uh, I, I think we should take up Kim's motion first, and then we'll uh, we'll, we'll talk about that after. So have we added the language? Mm -hmm. uh, Kim, does that, that reflect what you were stating? Um, yeah, I would say something like new and available appointments will be announced. So if there are openings on subcommittees, people should be made aware of that. And if somebody has a gift or a talent to add to that subcommittee, they should be allowed to do so. Selena, can you unmute? Um, Marilyn? I did. Okay. Oh, hi. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. My, uh, my mouse is broken. I haven't been able to unmute this whole time. Marilyn, the keyboard space bar usually will unmute you. Okay, thanks. I'm not so technically savvy, I guess. All right, um, do we have any other discussion on this motion? Can we move to a vote? Okay, so uh, go, go ahead, Cody. Very briefly, um, I, I appreciate all of this, um, the dialogue. However, um, I am gonna speak against this motion only for the fact that um, like how it works, how what I'm used to and what it works in the house. Um, I'm on several committees and you know, any member of the house is welcome to attend those committees. However, um, and be informed and to advocate for, um, I don't, I, I guarantee you, I don't foresee this being a problem. Any of us saying that, hey, you know, co-chairs, I would like to be on this committee. It's not like we, people are clamoring, you know, to get on all these committees. I just, um, I think it's a good procedure move to have, you know, to point people to a point. Um, I think it's, it's, a, it's well-intentioned, very well-intentioned. Um, but I'm going to be voting against this um, motion. All right, um, Seth and then Kim. Uh, yeah, I just want to make it clear that I support this motion because if this, if this, if these rules were in effect, then I could have been um, part of the planning committee or the bylaws committee. Uh, as it stands, I've been asking, and I haven't been able to get appointed to either. Um, so. You know, I'm not sure what the hangup is. Like I said, like 
Mary Ann mentioned earlier, Charlie, Charlie Mullins got on. Um, and I'm just not sure what the problem is. So yeah, I would like the option to join some of these voluntarily. I don't think that people are going to stretch themselves too thin. Um, we all know our capability. So. All right, thank you. Uh, Kim? Yeah, I just wanted to say, I, uh, thank you, Cody, for your, um, your, your statement. But the truth of the matter is that members of the AAC have not been informed of what committees are available and they've expressed interest in being on committees and they've not been allowed to join them. Um, and some members were actually told, we don't, we don't need you on this committee. Thank you very much. And I, I think that's inappropriate um, to refer or to, to rebuff someone who has expressed interest and or may have a talent or gift to add to a subcommittee. Um, I'm not sure why we would rebuff their advances to want to participate. That to me is a bit um, questionable and suspect. So that's why I'm suggesting the language. All right, do we have any other further, further discussion? All right, uh, so all those in favor, we'll move to the vote. All those in favor of uh, adding uh, the language before you, highlighting in yellow has the, a section of rule 14. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. So we had one, two, three. Okay. So it uh, looks like we. Uh, yeah, I don't want to get stuck on that. Both sides, right? Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Somebody mute. I'm doing it, buddy. We all. Okay. All right. It uh, looks like it, uh, we got more yay. So it looks like it's going to pass. Okay. All right. Um, so. Um, We've been here for almost two hours. Does anybody, can we get a, uh, I would like to just a quick uh, recess, a bathroom break, maybe like five minutes. Um, can, can we do that right quick? Does anybody, can everybody just five? Um, chair, uh, yeah. Question of the chair. Yeah. Um, as you did mention, yeah, it's, we've been here almost two hours. Um, it's a school night for me. Tomorrow's our first day back. I mean, I got. I I would like to look at the option too. I I, I mean, considering, is it possible that we could recess this meeting and come back at a later date, give people more time, maybe even to like you know look over everything? But I mean, I can't continue going on until very late. Okay. Would it be appropriate yeah. to originally the question? Hold on, move no, the no. question of Kim's amendment here, what's in yellow, and then we could pass it, and then we could just adjourn for the night. We could get this done, and then these will be our rules. We'll have rules final. Okay. We did pass, pass it. it. I, I oh, think we did pass it. We did pass it. it. Oh, yeah, we did. We did. You're right, Kim. Yeah, we right. passed it. All right, so the, the, the meeting was originally uh, supposed to be called at 1030. So like I said, we got 15 minutes. Um, so... Um, I don't know what you else want to, do you want to return. I think the the motion that Mary had uh, Clater had made. Yeah, I'm that, sorry. Yeah. That got put off because there were other motions uh, yeah. was to refer to the bylaw committee. I don't know if you will want to bring that up now, but I think yeah. that that would be respectful to okay. what, right. what she was okay. asking for. Yeah, perfect. Thank you for that. You back in line. All right, um, Mary, did you want to just restate your mo motion uh, briefly and we can go ahead and vote on it? Well, you know, just Selena, go back up or to the top. Did you already have it in there or you did, or you took it back out at the top? What, what are you talking about? Uh, where we were saying Talk refer. To go back to the very top. The top. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I thought you had typed it in there before and then we just decided we were. I, did, I didn't type uh, a motion to refer, but I can type a motion to refer um, right here. Um, if you want to move to refer to the bylaw uh, committee uh, for um, oh. review, is that what you want to do? Oh, no, I just got the, this is so, see, because it's, it's really not ready for referral because people really wanted to make more motions. So I'll just take that off. Okay. But I, one thing I did want to add, I mean, this is not related to this before we adjourn to make sure that we do at least welcome the new, I mean, don't, don't adjourn before we have an opportunity to do what we should have done months ago to welcome the new 
at least do that part of our agenda before we recess or whatever we're going to do. Okay. Good call. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So far as the procedural rules, would it? Go ahead, Jerry. Oh, I can yield to Kim. I saw her put her hand okay. up. Go ahead, Kim. Sorry, I just had a general question. So there was some concern um, on email primarily that um, once the subcommittee meets, um, I guess they uh, are supposed to take their findings from that subcommittee presented to the committee, the AAC, for approval and adoption before they share it with the larger public. But it seems like that was not done with the tours, the listening tours. And so the question is, if we're going to refer the procedural rules to a subcommittee, is it with the understanding that the subcommittee will work on it to uh, make it the best set of procedural rules they possibly can and then put that before the AAC for adoption and voting? Or is it understood that the subcommittee will have complete control over what the procedural rules will, will be and then we'll all just adopt it as is? Because there seem to have been a lot of... Um, confusion about what the role of a subcommittee was. I guess that wasn't defined. And then poof, they were listening to ours and a lot of folks were confused about that. Uh, from from my understanding is that a subcommittee would present their findings to the to the larger group. So after they worked on it, then they would present it and we would have discussions. Time about, and, correct. It, and then uh, we would have finalized rules. As and the, a, for a vote, the, correct? Chair the um, bylaw. Okay. That was my understanding as well. That that would we would work on it, and then it would be put back before the entire committee to be voted on. Yeah. Thanks for the clarification. Go ahead, Jerry. Seek unanimous consent to refer the draft procedural rules to the bylaws committee. Yes. All right. So um, I'll, I'll let her write in it first. All right, so all those in favor of, uh, do we have any other discussion that we need to have on this? Okay. Cody, did you and, just- uh, Mr. Chair, I, I, I think in lieu of asking all those in favor, you could just seek objections. Would okay. probably be the most uh, efficient way to do this. Thank you. Can I, get some, uh, can I just get clarification on what we're about to vote on, please? Uh, what we're saying is that we're gonna refer the, the, these procedural rules to the bylaw committee to clarify work on and then they would be presented back to the next meeting to for our official vote to pass. Thank you. And I have discussion. All right, go ahead, Cody. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I definitely think this is a good idea. This is a lot of, um, you know, there's 13-ish now rules. There's a lot to it. Is it perfect? No. Um, but I think, you know, more eyes on this and getting some more time and some sleep. To look at this, refer it to the bylaw committee. Let's get to work on it, figure it out, fix it better, make it make it all succinct, and uh, bring it back before the entire committee for everyone to look at and approve. I think that's a great idea. Uh, so I can. All right. Do we have any objections to uh, referring this to the bylaws committee so they can work on it? Like you said, get, get them extra eyes on it, refine it, and then when we have our next meeting, we can review it and uh and. Uh, and, and pass it or not. Do we have any objections? Go ahead, Mary Thorpe. I would just like to add that it comes back at the next meeting. So there's a time frame on that proposal. Oh, good, thank you. All right. So uh, Jerry, did you, you just had your hand up or you had another question? No, sorry, I have a motion ready after this one. Okay. All right, great. So uh, we're going to refer to the bylaws committee to be further reviewed and worked on, and then uh, we will present it at our next meeting. Go, go ahead, Mary. Um, so when you're, I just want a clarification. Uh, mm -hmm. When you're saying, because weren't we saying we might extend this meeting? So is that, it, uh, do they have to have it prepared? I mean, is there our next meeting mm -hmm. other next, than this yeah. one if this was extended? Okay. <laughs> I, I mean, like the next meeting of this meeting, like the next the next time we meet. That, I, I guess that's what I was referring to. The next time we meet, for as far as the second half of this meeting, part two of this one, they, they should but, have it ready by then. Go ahead, so you So you expect them to have it ready by then? Yeah. I mean, if, we, if we're going to meet in two weeks or... or, or, or I think or, we, I think we, we need to have a deadline. What's that? I think the bylaw committee 
Y'all could give us a deadline yeah. about when you want it done so that we meet and meet the goals of the group. Yeah. I mean, I would refer that to Cody. What do, what do you think as far as um my the, only the, the is enough? Depending on how we could go about this in two ways. Like if we, you know, um do move to recess and not adjourn this meeting, our meeting is still in continuance until the next time we would meet. Um and that could be, you know, we could make that two weeks or we could make it so, so however long. Um, we can get to work on that, but it depends on like if we say we're going to meet tomorrow or, you know, next Monday, that's I don't think really feasible for our committee, you know, in that short time period. If it's a little bit longer, absolutely. Um, but, you know, it, we would need some time to, you know, really get to work on this and look at it and, you know, get all our eyes on it together and also work everyone's schedules out. So I think that would need to be a major consideration because we could have this definitely prepared probably by the next official meeting that we do. Um, but if we continue this meeting and do not adjourn and we come back in a short period of time, we would need a little bit longer than that. All right, it depends, gotcha. on, it depends on when we come back. All right. I I agree with Cody, but also can we give ourselves a deadline to get the uh, suggestions into the bylaw committee? Yeah. A timeline to help us out. So. All right. Um, I think we're. Um, how about. What do you, what, um, this is just a suggestion. Um, today's the 17th. Like. I'm gonna go ahead and suggest maybe in, in haste, what could we do it within the next, uh, maybe by September 1st? September 1st is the Indigenous Caucus regular meeting. Um, so, What time is that? I believe we scheduled it for 6.30. Okay, what about August 31st? That's, a, that's exactly two weeks. Um, Cody, are you are you saying that you just want uh, you're, you're setting a timeline by or or you're saying meetings on those dates? For which to have, it, to have it by, and then I can get together with the members of the bylaws committee and um, organize. Um, question, actually, parliamentarian, would I have is. Since that's not, is that considered an official meeting that we would have to be within the time? Okay, so it would have to actually be a little bit later. How about we set the date then for uh, September 10th? That's the women's. Uh, well, that would be by. That, that would be by. That gives that gives us some wiggle room. Ariana, myself. Um, a little bit earlier that week to figure out everyone's schedules, but if we have it by the tenth, okay, we could work to we could figure out everyone's schedules that week prior, which would give us time. Okay. Um, whose motion was that? Um, did someone have a motion to have this the, the time frame included? Um. I believe it was your motion, right? I think the motion had already been um, kind of like went by, um, you know, a unanimous understanding. Um, so I don't know if that, I that we need a motion for just a, an agreement of when you guys get that, that done. If I may. Go ahead, Jerry. Okay, um, so kind of with the way that I sensed um, that motion is, I kind of sense that uh, the timeline being an objection, right? But I'm more than willing now, I think, just to clarify with Cody and everything, I'll make this a motion then so we can vote on this. Cody, you were saying September 10th, correct, was the date? To have it at least by. Um, to have, would, okay. To have, at, to have the, the, the rules um, brought back. So it doesn't we don't have to have a meeting, an AA, you know, caucus, uh, meeting on that date, but we would have it at least by that date. That would give me like 10, 9, 8, 7, 6 to kind of work with everyone's schedules to organize, you know, um, 
a meeting, but also we could send, you know, everyone has should have a copy of this. So we can all be working on this, you know, between now and then we can have our meeting and then we can um, get together whoever, you know, wants to be working on this. If we can add that clause of the by September 10th um, and it's agreeable to Cody, I'll go ahead and make that motion. All right. Um, do we have a second on that motion? Can we get language also? Go, could you just, just run it back to me so I can um, just because we said a lot. Could you just run it back to me? Yes, it, it's the uh, top part of what's on the frame right now, and it's going to be a motion to commit the procedural rules to the bylaws committee by September 10th. Okay. All right. I thought this was, yeah. And I'll make so, that motion if anyone would like to second. Do we have a second? I'll second it. All right. Do we have any discussion on that? Marianne, do you, you have your hand up? Uh, yeah, well, I had it up with two things. Should, should that be that they're going to complete it by September 10th, not just commit? Um, um, I believe that's what um, Cody I, I said. So. Huh? Cody, is that correct that you will complete it by September 10th? Yeah, not necessarily like we would have to have a meeting, you know, an AA caucus meeting by then, but we would have it ready to present if you so chose. By September 10th. Yeah. Got you. Okay. Did you, you had another part of the question? Well, I didn't know. Maybe I'm just understanding what commit means. I, I was thinking commitment that we, okay, I'm out. So maybe somebody can give me what does commit mean? Just that you're sending it to them. You're asking, okay, you're, you're turning, thought. you're turning this thought. over to them. Okay, that's, well, that's what I thought. So I don't think that this, I think you might need to add to be completed then. Isn't that when he's, they're trying to get a completion date for them to have a deadline to have it completed. Is that correct? Not that they're going, we're going to have a meeting, but that they would have it completed by a certain date. I mean, Cody can maybe, Yes. Just to clarify, yes. So uh, between now and, and then, all of them, uh, everyone who is on the bylaws committee, who um, we all have the, this document right now, uh, how it be edited, and we can go back and we can work on our own and we can discuss and figure it all out, get it hammered out um, at the meeting, and then we will have that to present at least by September 10th. Um, if we have a meeting, you know, anytime after that, we'll be ready to present our uh, subcommittees, uh, the bylaw subcommittees uh, results to the whole uh, committee. Okay, but that's not what it says there. It says commit by. That means we give it to you by. Mm -hmm. What you're saying is you give it back to us by. So that language needs to be ch changed. I didn't type it. I understand. All right, you just uh, Jared. The I, Jared, I this is your be, yeah, Jared. This complete. is your motion. Um, can you can you um, alter it so we don't have to do amendments? Yeah. Okay. So just we can and I can sense there's any objections, right? I'm not trying to be out of order here, but I just want to make sure that I'm trying to do the most agreeable thing for everyone on the committee. So we have the first clause. So we want to commit the procedural rules to the bylaws committee. Yes, we want to have that action done. I don't think we need a clause for this, but it's implied. <laughs> that action of committing is done immediately. This is immediately committed over. And then we need to say, uh, perhaps the phraseology we could use would be to uh, be completed by, or to work on it, because I think that's the clause we're missing. And I apologize for being a little bit um, misplaced here, to work on and be completed by September 10th. And then I think we could add a clause after return, or you know, if we want to say returning or after September 10th there. If there's any, um, yeah, is, is, like it, I don't think it'd be out of order. Like, you know, any objections really to that language or anything you'd like me to kind of change that motion with there before we proceed? And then I guess I'll consider that a friendly amendment or whatever we, the proper uh, procedure would be so that way we may consider this uh, business. All right, so do we have anything further to add to this? All right, so, um, so all those in favor? Uh, I did have one thing. I, can I add one thing real quick? Mm -hmm. um, would it be possible to add to add language that we could get this um, 
one completion of the, to disseminate it to the AA, mem, AA committee members so that we would have time to look over what changes they've made after September 10th? Yeah, I don't. I don't could we just take that? I, I I think something that would really help us out a lot. I'm not trying to be out of order here. It would be some good faith. I think if we could take the co-chair, uh, sorry, the chair of that committee at his word that he can get it back to us by then, I think that would be acceptable. And then if that doesn't happen, I think after that meeting, some date after September 10th, we can deal with that. But I think perhaps this would be a very good way to begin, like, you know, good faith among us as an organization institution is if we place our trust within Cody and what he has reported to us thus far. And then if that doesn't happen after September 10th, I think then we could have a larger conversation about that. But until then, I think for right now, I'd like to place trust in that. All right, uh, do we have any anything else before we take the vote? All right, so all those in favor? Give me aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, so order and pass. And, um, uh, so we got that under underway. Uh, so it is now 1034. So I want to just introduce our new caucus members and then Marianne. Well, I want, before we moved on real quick, I wanted to, if, can we get clarification who's actually on these committees? Cause did I hear Cody say and Ariana? So I don't even know, is she a co-chair now? And can we go ahead and take this opportunity for people to go ahead and volunteer, get it out the way. Because right. emails aren't being answered. So just go ahead and get out the way. May I say something real quick? I'm sorry. It is um, five after meeting time. I think that every, because we haven't gotten to anything else on the schedule besides uh, step two. Um, I do think that we should like respect all the new uh, caucus members and introduce them. But I think that everything else should be tabled until the next meeting or pushed over to the next meeting or we can also send emails just because we all should be off the zoom call by now yeah i'm, I'm gonna have to agree with that and then we can um if you would like to volunteer for the for the committee you can send that email all right um so i want to start off with the um indigenous people's caucus um so uh, mary and seth please introduce yourself um i won't introduce you, know, you can introduce yourself sure. briefly Okay, yeah, I'm Seth Sturm. I was Mary Ann Cleeter's campaign manager in 2016 and 2020. Uh, I left the Democratic Party for a while and came back at this opportunity um, to do some good for the indigenous people of West Virginia. That's my main focus, my main goal. I think all of you have seen my emails that state as such. Um, so that's what we're working on. We passed uh, the resolution stating our, reaffirming our desire to be a positive force within the Democratic Party. And that extends to the Affirmative Action Committee. And I want to say that um, I really enjoyed this meeting tonight and seeing how we can actually work together. Uh, that's really refreshing for a change. So um, yeah, that's just who I am. And I'm glad to see what we've done tonight. Thank you. Uh, Mary? Oh, no, she's still on. Mary, I can see she's not on. We'll come back to her uh, if, if she comes hops back on. All right, so from the Latino, uh, we have the co-chairs of the, the Latin Caucus. We have uh, Kim Felix and Charlie Mullins. Uh, we all know Kim, but you can uh, introduce yourself. And if we do have Charlie uh, on here, he can introduce himself as well. Yeah, so Charlie isn't here this evening, but Charlie Mullins is the co-chair with myself. Uh, my name is Kim Felix, and I am co-chair of the Latin Caucus. And... Um, we're happy to be here this evening. Sorry, I'm so tapped out. It's like my eighth Zoom meeting of the night. So yeah, thank you so you. much. <laughs> feel you. All right, and we uh, last we have the co-chairs of the uh, Amer Asian American Specific Islander Caucus. Um, and just point of order, just note about me, my wife, her uh, grandmother was from the Philippines. So um, yeah, this is a note about me. Okay. Um, uh, Start with Dottie. Uh, hi, uh, I'm, gl I'm glad to be here. Uh, my name is Dottie, Dottie Berger. I am a professor emeritus at WVU. Uh, and I would like to have us all working together and, and keeping in mind that, the, that our targets should, should not be each other uh, in this caucus, but rather our uh, friends in the Republican Party. So 
I'm pleased to help however I can. Thank you for that. And we have a Miss Emily Clifford. Her dad is a, your dad brags on you all the time. Just to let you know why he's in court, he's a great lawyer. And I, I really love, him. he's a good guy. So go ahead, Emily. Thank you. Um, so my name is Emily Clifford. I am um, a recovery therapist. Uh, sorry, I just had to say that because I got my job over the week, so I'm new to it. <laughs> I am also a organizer for Unpack, which is a student organization for um, activating young people to be involved in democracy. And then I've joined the AAPI caucus because I will, first off, I am Asian American, but also I have been victim of racial attacks. So I just want to make sure that my, I can help make sure that other people don't have to experience what I've gone through. And also I'm just very proud to be Asian American, which is something that was hard for me to come to terms with that first. So that's why I'm here. <laughs> all right. Well, it's great to meet all of you. I'm happy that you are um, a part of this, uh, committee that way you can add your uh, valuable perspective to everything and uh, we can like Seth said we can uh, get things pushing and move it along um, so with that like I said it's uh, 39 after so we are going to um, adjourn this meeting yeah, okay. I just wanted to get a clarification yeah. real quick when you said who do we send the email who do they send the email to about joining the subcommittee yeah, as far as the uh, yeah. We'll we'll, uh, we'll disseminate an email as far as everybody who's on or the co-chairs of the various committees, and you could just send that email directly to them about joining. Um, okay, okay, okay. So you'll have that. You'll put that. Make it clear. Then you're going to send an email to all of us on instructions on who we contact. Not really an instruction. You just, like I said, you, you can just you can send that to the co-chair of that committee and just join. But we'll have, we'll have all that all that laid out. Hollis, point of yeah. order. Yeah. Are we recessing this meeting to another time? I'm sorry, I used the giant. You're correct. We are going to recess this meeting to another time. I think, I, the, I think, I think it's actually the, the proper ter terminology is your, you, you will be in recess, but if you are, you can adjourn to another date. And since we don't know that date yet, because we're waiting on the bylaw committee, um, you could adjourn to a date on at the call of the co-chairs. Okay. And again, we'll we'll send that out. All right. Is that, uh, well, again, is that, thank is you that language is correct? Is is what you want to do? Okay. So we'll adjourn to another meeting. Adjourn to a recess. Is that what you said? I'm just kind. I'm a little fried here. No, no. no. You you you, you adjourn to a a, a date um, on, on the call of the co-chairs, and then we will be in recess ten, uh, until then. Okay. All right. So. Go ahead, Jerry. This is the last thing. I, I'm so sorry to do this. I just want to make sure, um, Kim, you did have a statement from Charlie, right? Did you still want to read that as like maybe the introduction or something or get that on before uh, the recess? Or would you rather wait for that, like when the next meeting occurs? I really appreciate that, Jared. Um, so the statement that Charlie provided was in response to uh, a set of emails that had went out that had gone unanswered. And I think it's really up to the committee if you all want to stick around for another you know, 60 to 90 seconds for me to read it, then I can. If you prefer that I adjourn, uh, that we adjourn and then I can read it at the next meeting, that's really up to you. Um, okay. Um, I, I think if, if he can be at the next meeting and he can state and he can, you know, state it himself, because I don't, because I think it, it can be 60, 90 seconds, but it could open up for various discussions that could last for another 10, 15 minutes. And I, I have to totally understand. Yeah, sure. Totally so, understand. All right. So we're going to uh, adjourn this meeting to the for recess to the next one. All right. Uh, thank you guys for being on and um, I will see you later.